President Trump's upcoming overseas trip. There are even suggestions the trip should not happen. A Washington Post op-ed by Sarah Posner says Trump's trip must be cancelled. Our national security, our relationships with allies and the security of the world are at risk due to the president's erratic behavior and inability to adhere to basic norms of both democracy and diplomacy. Well, James Rubin is a former U.S. Assistant Secretary of State under Bill Clinton, and he was a senior media advisor on Hillary Clinton's campaign. He joins me now. Clearly someone else is trying to get your attention as well, James. But uh, in terms of what we want to talk about, what do you make of that Washington Post article? Do you think that President Trump's, Trump's trip should be cancelled? I don't think uh, a viewer and observer of President Trump's administration up to now uh, should fairly draw that conclusion. He's got a very responsible team of officials uh, who will be traveling with him. What I do think is that after this uh, troubling disclosure of special information that the team is going to have to be more careful and there's going to have to be a special effort to ensure that uh, any possible uh, disclosure of, of sensitive information is handled in a far more professional way because this was amateur hour where the president was uh, not even aware that using that information posed risks, not even aware that uh, just to say what he said, uh, regardless of this, uh, the way in which it was found, would lead people to know how it was found. That's on the international front. On the domestic front, obviously, the rest of the world is going to be meeting a president who is weakened by the uh, steady uh, drumbeat of, of Republicans and Democrats who now want to have a serious investigation. That's what's changed between today and, and a couple of days ago. You're starting to hear Republicans who are determined to have a serious investigation. Up till now, many of them were hoping it would all go away. And in terms of this trip, in many ways, the Trump administration had hoped that it would be some sort of reset, a refocus. In many ways, is there still that opportunity to do that? Or is this a possibility? Is, this, is there a chance that this becomes sort of a manifestation of his problems? Well, I think both of these things will be going on. It, presidents, uh, including the one I worked for, Bill Clinton, have traveled abroad during a domestic crises and there was kind of a split-screen environment uh, that I recall in which on the one hand uh, American president was performing the nation's business now in Clinton's case of course he was very good at performing the nation's business had a lot of experience by the time I worked for him and was able to conduct it without any risk of of disclosures but it went on even as uh, the Washington reporters the Washington media the Washington based uh, uh, press corps was obsessed with something happening in Washington and carried that obsession with them uh, to the field. I suspect the way the Trump team will handle this is to uh, minimize to the extent possible interaction between uh, the president and the Washington press corps. And there will be as many staged events as possible, particularly in Saudi Arabia, where a lot of that can happen uh, very naturally, where the press corps doesn't get much of a chance to, to see what's going on. So I think that will put a premium on these events being staged very carefully, being uh, essentially uh, avoiding a questioning from the press, because when that happens, the split screen effect will go into uh, being. And the split screen effect you're obviously referencing was uh, the, Mon the Monica Lewinsky scandal and then the impeachment process. Uh, and, and clearly that must be a distracting issue. I mean, you, you talk about President Clinton being good at separating, but still, for an administration that is just starting off, how distracting will all these domestic questions be? And, and also, what does it mean when he's trying to have face to face serious, face to face conversations with world leaders? Well, I think. We don't know for sure how President Trump will behave under a serious crisis. He's never faced a domestic or an international crisis of any kind. And this will be probably his hardest test. Will he be able to compartmentalize the way Bill Clinton could? I have to tell you, I doubt it. Bill Clinton was extraordinary at being able to put aside what was happening to him at home and do uh, the foreign policy business of the country. What we've seen from Donald Trump during the campaign and as president is whatever is bothering him at the moment, he talks about, he tweets about, he obsesses about. So that will be the determination of how uh, effective the split, split screen effect will be. Will he be able to operate? Now, meanwhile, what you're pointing out is that uh, Donald Trump has never taken a 
presidential trip before. He's only been president a very short time. Uh, fortunately for him, he's got a, a professional team on the foreign policy side, particularly with the uh, national security advisor and his secretary of defense are, you know, uh, officials and, and former generals or current serving uh, generals who uh, have operated in this kind of environment before. And, and I suspect if President Trump is smart, his natural tendency to take over and not listen to whatever anybody is recommending he do will be uh, put aside for a moment and he will pay extra attention uh, to H.R. McMaster, his national security advisor, and others who are advising him of how to appear presidential. And during the campaign, we saw that President Trump, when he wants to, can put aside all of his natural instincts and, for example, read a speech without adding any information or otherwise just perform the role that he's supposed to be performing. Okay, great to have your perspective. Jamie Rubin, appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, just moments ago, you heard U.S. House Speaker Paul Ryan speak out about that bombshell memo by James Comey, the FBI director, fired by President Trump when asked if he has confidence in President Trump. Speaker Ryan said he does. He also said all the facts are needed before rushing to judgment. He repeated that a number of times. And in just a few minutes, Democrats are set to hold their own news conference on the Russia probe. Of course, we'll keep an eye on all of that. Uh, importantly, it's to note, uh, Republican Senator John McCain has been comparing the allegations facing Trump to Nixon and Watergate. Listen to what he had to say. I think it's reaching the point where it's of Watergate size and scale and a couple of other scandals that you and I have seen. It's a centipede that the shoe continues to drop. And every couple of days, there's a new aspect uh, uh, of this uh, really unhappy situation. Unhappy situation. Well, Ryan Nobles has been monitoring all of those comments and lots more from Capitol Hill. Uh, we heard uh, Paul Ryan speaking just moments ago. What, what did you make of his comments? Well, I think it really reflects uh, what a lot of Republicans are saying up here on Capitol Hill, Robin, and, and that's that they're in a wait-and-see mode. They're not ready to convict the president of anything. They're not ready to rush to any kind of special judgment. Uh, they want all the facts to, uh, to be laid out on the table, and then at that point, they'll make a determination about how to move forward. Uh, but it is still a different tone from Republicans, where uh, they were quick to defend the president when these past uh, controversies and scandals erupted. This time around, they're being much more measured. There actually are a few Republicans that have now taken the step of calling for a special prosecutor or an independent commission to look into all these different affairs, uh, but they're still in the minority. In most cases, Republicans still want all the facts to be laid out on the table before they're going to make some sort of a definitive move. Among them, Senator Marco Rubio, who I've talked to this morning. Uh, Rubio wants uh, James Comey to testify. Uh, he wants to see this alleged memo, but he thinks at this point we're only hearing one side of the story. And what will it take for Republicans to perhaps change their minds? I mean, you're there in the halls of Congress. You can see the doors opening and closing, people walking around you. What are the conversations? I mean, how definitive is this change of mood? What could change it even more? Yeah, that's a great question, Robin. I mean, what will it take for the Republicans to take some sort of a definitive move that would essentially be an opposition of the White House? Because, uh, you know, calling for a special prosecutor or an independent commission would mean that they agree uh, that the situation has gotten grave enough where you have to look into this situation. And they're not being really all that clear as to exactly what it's going to take uh, to get them to that point. You know, I, you tried to pin down uh, Senator Rubio essentially on, you know, what you've seen from these press reports. Would you describe that as obstruction of justice? And if it is obstruction of justice, where would you go? And they're not even uh, entertaining that notion. They're saying that all we're seeing now is a press report that comes from an anonymous source. I want to see the memo myself. So I think until a lot of this plays out, in a more public setting, uh, are you going to see Republicans kind of try and take a very cautious approach to this before they make any kind of definitive move in either direction? Yeah, and I think that's a very important point. Uh, Paul Ryan uh, repeatedly saying he's dispassionate. He's, you know, he, he wants to make a sober assessment. He talked about facts over and over again. This is a process uh, and certainly a political process at that, not just a legal one. Thank you very much, Ryan Nobles. Okay, you're watching CNN. Lots more news coming up after the break. Stay with us.